Trees and snowfall. You're going to put all you've learned in our little lessons to work here. We're going to be doing a sky with a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm just using a little uh, Asian brush here. Just kind of showing you how easy it is to put a little bit of paint on the paper. And uh, this is Canson paper. Very simple. A little bit of phthalo blue in the middle. Paper's totally dry. And it doesn't look very good, does it? Ah, that's the secret. If you form good habits of putting it on, you'll see what happens here. Because I'm keeping all the edges wet, the bead is starting to happen, meaning the paint is flowing downwards and inwards. Things are moving together and blending together. I don't have to rub all the colors with my brush. Let the paper and the wet in the paper, we call it water and the paint, let them mix together. Look, look what's happening there. See that? Might give it a little swipe through there. The paper's glistening, which means the surface is wet, but it's not impregnated with water. It's just a little bit of water on the top. Add a little more blue on the side. Watching, very important. Remember our little lesson. Jump in and think and watch. Or think and jump in and watch. Watch is the common denominator. And that's what makes professionals always sort of ahead of the game. Because you're watching to see where it's going. Okay, I leave that sky. Although it doesn't look great, it will. It'll just blend all together. Now I'm using the roughness of the paper with my flat brush to get a sort of a grainy look like you get in the winter when there's icy snow around. The paper's small enough so I just have to hold it with my finger so it doesn't buckle. Pushing the brush this way, that way. You see the few lines going into the picture. Very important. Just sweep them across with your brush. Now get a little darker here. You know what I'm going to do. I'm going to let the paint disperse. The sky is wet. So when I add some strong mid-tones, I know it looks dark, but it's a mid-tone because watercolors dry lighter. You put them on strong, Five minutes later, they're half as strong. So I see a, I've got a little snowbank there, a little white. I'm just going to leave that. I'm not going to get rid of it. And I'm going to add more to the trees. A little more blue. And I'm mixing, basically mixing it right on the paper. There we are. The one on the right is longer than the one on the left. That's a good design principle even if it's just a little bit longer. Okay, paper's flat. I'm thinking. What am I thinking about? Let's see what I'm thinking about. Ah, I'm going to put some little dark swipes here and there. Now, coming up a little higher there. See, we just touch it. There we go. I'm using my flat brush, a very soft brush. And now it's going to run. The bead is running. Remember the bead. The bead is the water that collects. If you can keep that flowing, see I'm flowing it to the left. It's also coming up on the top. Look how the sky's turned out. It's got some warm sections and some cool sections. Oh, oh, here comes the rigger brush. See how I lay it on? Just lay it flat. Details are very interesting. In a watercolor, you can suggest details. You don't really have to make a lot of them. Just put little, little dabs here and there. And now I'm watching it, looking at the color, going, hmm, let's see, things are looking good. What else am I going to do here? 
just thinking it out, watching. Oh, wow, look what's happening. The paint has done all the work. The paper's dried for about an hour, and I gently bend it to flatten it. You don't have to stretch it, just gently bend it a few times and prepare a dark color. I'm using some alizarin crimson, some phthalo blue, a little bit of burnt sienna, and good old Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is great. You don't have to spend a lot of money on it. It's black, basically, uh, so can't get very many bad blacks. And uh, I'm going to be adding some more of this burnt sienna. I'm making a very dark mixture, almost buttery, not a lot of water, but enough water to flow. And I'm using my flat brush. Let's just have to have the right color. So I don't think it's dark enough, so I add a little more Payne's Gray. There we are. And I'm going to get set. First step. Take your time. Find the place. Wiggle. Push the brush down. And move it just like in the exercise. I even twisted it a little at the top. Now I add the little hooks on the side. It's the exact same tree you did in your exercise. Now you can do many variations. Do you know what I'm going to put in next? That's right, the foot. You're going to make that tree look like it's in the snow. The bottom of trees are always a little bit, well, you might say dirty in the winter because of the branches up top. It's never completely full of snow. There will always be something on the snow. You noticed I used my rigger brush. I have it in one hand and I have my flat brush in the other hand. And there we are putting in little fence posts. This is a picture you can make anywhere. Lots of people use this idea of some snow, some fence posts, a couple trees in the background, blue sky. We're not so concerned of the subject matter as we are with the techniques and the habits we're forming. Here comes the darker accents. Make sure you um, make sure you mix up enough paint, right? And you get that nice curve at the bottom. Here comes the next tree. Well, we're going to turn it upside down. Try something different. Why not? Oh, that's a good little turn. See the side of the brush? And when it goes up, look at that lovely uh, variation in color from the cool bottom to the warm top. And there's your little feet. I mean, your little arms. And I'm going to put some at the bottom. I'm keeping that little ledge, you see? That's a good shape. Always look for good shapes. I'm just adding little darks here and there. This is about as dark as we're going to get. And see the paper's drying there? I can get a little harder edge. I put that dark underneath the tree limb, which I'll add in a minute. Now we need three trees. Two uh, look like goal posts or fence posts. So where am I going to put the third tree? This is where you think. Where is it going to go? Is it going to go beside that tree? Is it going to go beside the other tree? Is it going to be straight, big? I'm going to keep the same curve as the tree on the left. I'm going to keep that round theme, or what we might call bent. And that's as far as I go with the trunk because I'm going to be using my rigger brush soon. The rigger brush will do all the fine details. Now I'm scattering some darks. A good habit. Don't be afraid to put some darks on that brilliant white paper. 
They lead you into the picture. They're not just thrown down helter-skelter. They're put in certain places. And you're the judge of where you want to put them. Okay, now we're going to get down to some details now. There's the rigger brush. And test it. Perfect. It's loaded with dark and we're going to be putting in little grassy, fringy strokes. Maybe making a little wire there, a broken. That, that leads towards the tree. It's subtle, but after a while you just know where to do it. Okay, here it is. There comes the first one. That's one. There's got to be another one somewhere. Coming out of there, there's two. That's a fine looking tree. I'm holding the paper with a brush because I don't want to get my fingers on the wet paint. It's, oh, it's probably dry by now, so still it's not a good idea to put your fingers all over the painting. That little brush is just fantastic. Here comes the next tree. Remember connecting shapes. Let's see if I remember to connect the shape with that one. Here comes another one. And yet another one. That's connected there. That's a good connection. Remember, connect your shapes. You can connect them with lines, there we go, or you can connect, connect them with direction, make things point at them. Oh, there's a nice, that dark is great up there. Here it comes, a little flick, look at that, perfect. I think I'm having a good time putting these trims. I think what it is, it's the confidence of this brush. The rigger brush is something you need to use. Now there's other things I might have done in this, but I might do this painting a few times. It's a good little study. It's a good little painting. Now we're going to just touch the brush and put some of those, connect those, those uh, trees together, you see? Now they're connecting. Connect the shapes. A little bit of here, a little bit there. In the distance, the brush is getting lighter, the paint's getting lighter, so I can just sort of tap in a few things, and I don't know, I'm probably just about done here. Oh, we're getting some warm accents in the grass. Took a little yellow ochre, in the ochre there. Remember, cold pictures are not the best thing in the world. So there we go, just adding a little warmth here, a little warmth there. leading into the picture. I think you could have a lot of fun with this painting if you did it a few times. Oh, there we go. There's the name. I must like it if I put my name on it. Always a few really juicy little dark accents at the end with a watercolor. Add some bright reds or bright greens. Just uh, Look at that beautiful uh, tree on the right and left. Just adding a few things. Got that little tree on the right. You're going to connect that, Ron. You're going to maybe, what you're going to do? You're looking at it. Let's see. Is he going to, ah, oh, there he goes. Ah, good way to connect is just put a dark beside a dark. There we go. Well done. I think you you know what? I really would like to see your painting of this scene. I can't see how you couldn't do a good job on it. With that rigger brush, the flat brush, using that little tree technique. Look, just going after a few little details. And I'm resting the palm of my hand on the desk sometimes, but even this rigger brush, you can you can just have a free flowing stroke with your brush. Okay, I think we should make it snow. What do you think? Get yourself some opaque paint, 
You can even uh, some acrylic paint if you like, or opaque gouache. And there, we're gonna do it. There it is, he's, he's doing it. Looks like I'm doing it in the morning. Got my big sweater on. And I'm just, just bouncing some nice wet paint on there. Now, why am I doing that? Well, snow blows on angles. So if you put a piece of paper there, and just go straight down the edge of the paper, it looked like the wind is blowing the snow. Look at that. Geez, I'm glad I'm inside on a day like that. You may want to go over them a little. If you got too much, you just take your paper towel. Uh, I like the one way up on the top of the tree. A little more. It's like salt and pepper. Just shake it on. Know when to stop though. And I think that's a good place to stop. <laughs>